G'day guys, Jack Thompson here, professional ultra cyclist based in Girona, Spain. Now you're probably thinking, hey, this guy doesn't look familiar. And I wouldn't disagree with you. Despite the fact that my hair is normally a little longer than this, you've probably only seen me from beneath the helmet, out on the road somewhere, pushing myself into a big dark hole. But hey, it's always for a good reason. I'm recording this from my base in Spain, and by the time you guys see it, I'll have ridden across and into Portugal. There's a high likelihood it'll have consumed my body weight in Coca-Cola and other sugary goods, and no doubt I'll have a helmet tan to help tell the story. So as a bit of background for you, I've been working with Specialized now for three years. Originally, I was a tarmac man because I figured I was young, flexible, and had a desire to cover great distances at speed. I broke the seven day most kilometer board record at 3,505 kilometers back in 2020 aboard Tarmat. And while stiff, light and fast, it was the wrong bike for this application. And I suffered from hand numbness for a good few months afterwards. The team suggested I try Roubaix. And to be fair, I was a little hesitant at first. My concerns were around the geometry, particularly the stack height at the front end being too high. But I listened to their advice and jumped aboard a more aggressive team geometry route. First impressions of the future shock system were akin to riding disc brakes for the first time. Why the hell haven't I been riding this technology from day one? Fast, agile, compliant, and with the ability to rack up long kilometers day after day. I went on to ride the entire Tour de France route in 10 days back in 2021 aboard Roubaix. I then broke the Portugal crossing fastest known time later that year, again aboard Roubaix, although this time aboard a stock geometry Roubaix. Fast forward to this year, I broke the infamous Tokyo to Osaka fastest known time, and you guessed it, aboard Roubaix. But look, we haven't mentioned 2022. In 2022, I climbed a million meters or three and a half million feet up there. I ever said 52 times on 52 different climbs all around the world and set multiple world records in the process. I did a portion of the very steep climbs aboard Athos, but the majority was done aboard Roubaix. And in the process, I tested various products on behalf of the specialized team to assure the best possible end product. Now, why Roubaix for such a monster climbing challenge? The answer lies in the body's ability to deal with huge amounts of fatigue. In the Tour de France, a rider's TSS averages around 1,200 each week. In 2022, my average weekly TSS was north of 1,600 every single week. The route bay and the way that it's built and designed offers a huge amount of compliance all while remaining fast. One of the keys for me in 2022 was to keep my fatigue levels as low as was possible so as not to get sick or injured. And the one reason I decided to ride Roubaix 85% of the year was related directly to this. I could jump on the bike and ride it for 8, 10, 12 hours, day after day, without any after effects. The bike is a beast. There's no two ways about it. So to celebrate the media launch of the new Specialized Roubaix, I thought what better way than to unbox it, put it together and ride the Roubaix 1500 kilometers across Spain and down into Portugal. I've set myself a route that's 80% road and 20% gravel, just to keep things interesting and so as to take advantage of the extra tire clearance this new Roubaix offers. I've broken the route into seven days, so we'll average around 200 to 250 kilometers a day with the intention of riding with the media as part of a media launch event. My father Brian, or BT, has decided to accompany me in the car, so I'll be meeting him at the end of each day to catch up on life happenings from his home base in Australia. It's day three here now, it was absolutely howling winds out on the road this morning. It eased off this afternoon, but to be fair, despite the wind, this time on the road has actually been a great reset has provided the perfect opportunity to really push this bike and discover its full potential. 
So I was lucky enough to ride a prototype of this bike back in April, and without word of a lie, it is hands down the fastest Roubaix that I have ever ridden. The head unit on this trip might suggest otherwise, but that's all due to the headwind. I hate you, but it feels as though it just wants to go. It's insane. This is partly due to the new profiling, which you'll see takes on a more aerodynamic shape when compared to the previous version Roubaix. A lot of the compliance in this bike, or smoothness for lack of a better word, is due to the new Future Shock 3.0, the Parve seat posts and the drop rear clamp, which in turn makes for a longer effective seat tube with more give. I've ridden this on highway roads, blue chip metal roads, and various different types of gravel, and comfort levels are amazing. I've opted for the 35mm slick Mondo tyre, which in my opinion is the best choice for maximising this bike's ability. And when run at the lower tyre pressures, it really does offer the perfect mix of smooth speed. You guys will see that there's various additional mounts on this bike, which offers up some amazing opportunities for mounting additional gear for multi-day bike packing style trips and the like. There's a third bottle mount below the down tube, and on the top tube, you'll see there's mounts for a top tube pack. While I'm lucky enough to have my old man carrying my equipment each day for a pure bike packing trip, this is luxurious. Previously, there was concerns about the mounting strap for the top tube bags to actually damage the Future Shock housing. And so this solution keeps things super nice and clean while providing simple access for food and supplies without having to reach into the rear pocket of the jersey. The bike that I'm riding is basically fitted out exactly as you would see it on the shelves. I've got a stock 100mm stem, the Reval Terra wheels, which just blow the tires out that little bit more, and I'm aboard a Phenom 155 saddle. With four days to go now, we are close to Madrid and we'll then cross into Portuguese soil. And I've seen some amazing parts of Spain that I'd otherwise never have visited. So we're now here in Portugal. The bike's had a wash, she's as good as new, and the legs are freshening up nicely. The trip over's been amazing. I've connected more with my old man this last week than I have in the last four years, and I've put this new Roubaix through a real test. I've ridden long straight sections of tarmac roads, and I've ventured off the beaten track to see various highlights on dirt along the way. Now, while the Roubaix is not a gravel bike, it offers a roadie purist the ability to venture off-road and into light gravel, and in my opinion, offers the perfect mix of high performance with the ability to have fun. I find that I'm often on a long loop somewhere in the mountains and just want to connect to the next valley or that next town on a small gravel road. This bike is built for this, with 40mm tyre clearance, a whole raft of compliance, and additional bottom outs for those long days out, it's a high performance endurance road bike that allows the rider to get off the beat and track. And for this reason, it ticks a whole lot of boxes. So you might be wondering, what's next for me? I often do the same thing. Well, Russia is currently enduring a difficult political landscape. As soon as that opens up again, I've got my mind set on tackling the world circumnavigation record. Currently held by Mark Beaumont at 78 days and 14 hours, compatriot Lachlan Morton wants to give this a stab too, but I'm quietly confident that aboard Roubaix I'll have the secret weapon to do what it takes. Let's see what the future holds. <laughs>